Good evening. Tuesday, April 18th, 6.01 p.m. This is a public <coughs> workshop meeting and a hearing for the City of Albany Department of Planning Development Planning Board. I am Chris Ellis, joined by Roman Kachera on the Zoom. Vanessa Gouillard and Martin Hall. We certainly miss our immediate past chair, Al DeSalvo, as he, I believe, travels the, the globe in search of a little peace of mind and to <laughs> avoid uh, his Tuesday evenings going into the, the late night on land use issues. But nonetheless, the rest of us are here to persevere and advance. Uh, those that have taken the time to advance to submit applications and to be heard by the public. Um, <clears throat> on the hearing agenda, the first project we have is 00511. Our applicant is here. I will walk through the rules of procedure and then at completion, I'll call Mr. Graham to come and present on behalf of the Nurses Middle College Charter High School in California. The chair changed, but the rules didn't. Um, we have folks that were able to sign up for a comment through the link provided on the website. We will uh, review each, uh, each application. You have 10 minutes for remarks. And then mem members of the public that sign up through the link can present their remarks for three minutes because the elected officials represent large swaths and bodies of folks. Adriana says she can't hear you. Council needs to turn on her. Sound, can you hear me now? Roman, can you hear me? Roman can. Ms. De Leon, I don't see her, but thank you for that. Um, council members have six minutes to present their remarks and there's a five minute rebuttal for the applicant. I would ask that if someone has relayed information that you have a similar that you simply point that out. We do not need to hear it multiple times, but only add the emphasis. Uh, and we would understand and, and be able to walk away with that point. So without further ado, let's have Mr. James Graham from Synthesis Architects come to uh, present on behalf of the Nurses Middle College Charter High School in Pakistan. So at our 
Um, I, I don't know if we're going through it on the PowerPoint or not. <clears throat> Can I ask you to please speak into the mic? We're having some audio issues at the other end. Thank you. Good evening. So we were asked to uh, resolve and discuss some issues regarding transportation associated with the school. And I kind of proposed site of 50 Beaver. Um, there's been quite a bit of outreach with CDTA. We have a pro proposed agreement with CDTA and the school's transportation policy for the board's review. So, like the PowerPoint, as we discussed before, it's in a multi use district. <clears throat> it is downtown on Beaver Street, adjacent to um, the intersection of Beaver and South Pearl. It is the Nurses Middle College Capital Region, which is a charter high school. Charter Management Organization is Nurses MC, and the lead applicant is Dr. Brandon Robinson. The proposal is for uh, 50 Beaver to become the charter high school. In the uh, presentation, you see here the growth plan uh, for enrollment, looking for year one starting this year in September. So as uh, suggested and requested in the last meeting, we um, have collected some of the enrollment data. And if you see the bottom chart here, uh, the upper chart actually shows where students are coming from. If you see the bottom chart, you see the students that are coming by CDTA. It was suggested um, that almost all of the students come by CDTA. This information proves that to be true. Um, over 85% are on a, a single route. We you know, have a single ride on the way to school and are, will be dropped at South Pearl. Our main students are a combination of multiple routes, park and ride, and if you see here, the number that actually require um, school bus transportation by their resident district, uh, less, less than 5%. <coughs> For the board's review, we have the uh, transportation plan of the school. Um, it covers all aspects of arrival. Again, almost every student is coming by CDTA. We're walking up Beaver Street to the school entry. Um, the school is very interested in a successful start. Um, they're um, not only managing, uh, have staff managing the drop off and pick up, but also um, request at least detail for the first two days to make sure that everything is smooth and, and there's no uh, negative impacts in the uh, line arrivals. And you see here, this is provided by CDTA uh, based on the, the student enrollment. Um, student enrollment, again, you see here, kind of always in the chart before, these uh, green marks indicate students that have a single um, ride without a transfer, which is over 85% of student population. There is a proposed agreement in place with CDTA that they're prepared to share with the board. Um, uh, pending signature, which um, uh, all terms of, of the agreement are um, uh, satisfactory to both parties and expect that this will move forward and I'll provide a copy to the board. As we had said in prior presentations, the, um, the proposed use uh, in the charter school being in downtown is consistent with the uh, 2030 plan. Um, it really looks like a, a home run from a planning standpoint in terms of the number of things that are addressed in terms of um, student access to education, urban education, interconnectivity, and access to higher education institutions. Um, this really kind of hits a home run with all of those items in the comprehensive plan. And that, that's based on you know, a, a four year growth plan, not a much longer potential growth plan. This is a four-year growth plan that really touches all these items. Presentation includes the views of the street there. The 
as we previously reviewed, it included four plans, ground floor building, ground running parking, and of course building access to the, the upper floors. Uh, deal one includes what uh, occupancy of the second floor and third floor. And then beyond that, the, the school will continue growing here on the first floor. There are members of the Hopi Charter School organization and uh, uh, Capital Region School here. If you have questions, I'm happy to answer. Thank you, Mr. Stevens. Do we have any questions from the public on this? Uh, no questions, but we people sign up to uh, provide public comments. Absolutely. Any comments from the board before we? Were you guys able to meet with the building owner regarding across the street regarding the entrance to this building? Has that been resolved? So our letter was provided to the board um, based on review of that issue. Um, whether or not anybody here from the school is able to meet with the owner. That's not happening. It's found that there is not a way for, uh, to relocate entrances to achieve the 200 foot rule. So, wait, you're saying there's not? There's not. And the letter from Andy Grant, which uh, has been delivered to the board, addresses that. Okay. So, you may want to look, you know, consider that letter. He points out that it is not a lot achievable, but he presents other alternatives in the letter and thanks for the board to consider. Thank you. So Mr. Brick and Mr. Hirschberg could not be here tonight because of the conflict at this hour, but they did put in a request to move this item further in the agenda. That yes, they, they did. And I was going to interrupt, but it seemed like they were ready to present. Um, so as they came forward, two main representatives aren't here. Um, the gentleman, are you from Hirschberger, sir? Hirschberg, sir? Yeah, I'm Bill Bufrici with Hirschberger. Right. Hirschberg. So when they came forward, I assumed they were ready. Um, if they weren't, I would have accepted if they would have uh, said something and the chair could have then made a call. I had a conversation with Andy Brick before this meeting, and he did represent me that he would like to comment on and he, his impression was that the meeting get um, open and held until the latter part of the agenda. They had a conflict with the Miller planning meeting and they will be here later. I think the issue is that wasn't communicated to staff. So no, I think it was. It was and I'm sorry if I if I came to the table too quickly I misunderstood the Chairman Ellis is That's all right. I should have interrupted you, perhaps. Um, okay. So, so if it was communicated, we, we had that understanding. I just misunderstood all of that. Okay. So. Should, we, should we have them come back up later? That's all it's thinking. Yeah. So part of the question is also is why are we having a second public hearing? There was a public hearing last meeting. Again, the request was just to move this agenda item to later in the agenda. Yeah, so if I'm reading our agenda correctly, the action under consideration is conditional use permit. Mm -hmm. uh, so there is action that the board can take. How many comments do we have? Kinda? We have three speakers uh, registered to speak. Yeah, but I, I, if they have, if they're not ready, would it be fair if who's not ready? That part are applicants. Then, and they have an opportunity for rebuttal. Shouldn't they have the opportunity to hear the comments to properly rebut them if possible? You're James Graham? Oh, yeah. I have James Graham listed as the representing agent. 
your phone just pull it up there. <laughs> is there let me do it this differently. Is there a motion to defer? I move to defer to later in the meeting. Is there a second? I'll second. It's been moved and properly seconded to defer this agenda item until later in the meeting. We'll make it the last agenda item. That's fine for the last agenda item of the meeting. It's been moved and properly seconded to defer the current agenda item. Traditional use permit number 0063 to the final uh, agenda item. Is there any are there any questions from the board? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Those in opposed say no. Motion carrying the item is deferred. Next project is number 00519. 997 Central Ave for America Builders LLC is the applicant represented by David Fentner. All right, this is in the zoning district for mixed use community highway. And the proposal will allow controlled substance dispensary, marijuana dispensary to occupy plus or minus 2,777. Square foot uh, storefront at that site, and the action under consideration tonight is for the conditional use. So, Mr. Thank you. Floor is yours. Great. Thanks for having me. Um, David Beckner, I'm with Grow America. We're a uh, national design and build firm specializing in the cannabis industry. So, um, we probably worked on 60 dispensaries from coast to coast, um, and we're we were um, awarded a um, number of projects by DASNY um, to start working on dispensaries in the state. Um, I'm also here representing um, the card license holders who are here as well in the room. And um, they're with um, uh, Capital District Cannabis Wellness. And uh, they'll be available for questions as well as we move through here. Um, so thanks for having me. Um, I have a little presentation. I'll try to be quick. I know we we're, we're, have to be brief today. So. Um, I'll go through uh, basically what we are proposing, um, some of the elements of the dispensary. That's the first one in town. So I'll go through some protocols um, and answer any questions that uh, you may have on this. So um, if we can um, go to, yeah, that's just a little bit about us. Um, those are the states we've worked in. Um, we've done a lot on the East Coast. We've done about seven dispensaries already completed in uh, New Jersey. Worked in, you see, you know, Montana, California, Arkansas, um, and uh, this and another project downstate will be the two first in uh, New York. Um, so, the property address 997 Central. Again, um, I'm here on behalf of DASNY, um, ourselves, Grow America, and the Tar licensees. Um, this is going for a conditional use permit for a new retail cannabis dispensary. So, um, this is the proposed location. It was formerly a um, vacuum cleaner uh, store. And as you can see, um, I'm going to explain a little bit because um, we have the frontage where you see that car parked in the parking lot. That's um, the main entrance. And we'll have design elements. You'll see elevations and plans. But then the secure delivery loading zone is kind of, kind of go up there for a sec. Explain how this is laid out. So as you pull into Central, this is the main parking lot. This is the facility right here. So that's gonna be the main entry. And then on the other side of the restaurant is where we're gonna have the secure delivery and loading zone. And you'll see that a little bit better on the floor. You go to the next slide, please. Um, so that's the site plan. And actually, I should have sat down. I wanna go over some things here. So as you can see, we have, we have 28 parking spots. We have two dedicated ADA parking spots. We have four uh, spaces for bicycle racks. Um, this is the floor plan of the dispensary, but this is easier to see now how the secure loading zone is off on the other side. We looked at possibilities um, to close that up and have the loading come from behind, but there's just the price, as you can see, the property line doesn't allow for that. So what we're gonna do here is this, so we're gonna add some greenery, we're gonna add some 
um, privacy. Um, this space is needed for that tenant. So we'll probably add a little security gate here so you can pull in, have the, the secure loading, add in the landscaping, and it should be nice and private for any to get over. The next step slide, that's the floor plan. Um, we're proposing uh, 10 point of sale stations. Um, there'll be one ADA station and then um, probably two dedicated mobile order stations. We have a, a large reception area. So when you come in, you check in, you drive a license and what's that, that's gonna alleviate um, any lines. So, you know, a lot of dispensaries that were built a few years ago, the reception areas and the waiting rooms were, were smaller. Um, that's where you can see lines waiting outside. We have a nice large uh, reception area, which should allow uh, an efficient consumer experience. <coughs> so um, hours of operation, um, seven days a week, from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., expecting approximately 20 employees, uh, probably eight per 10 per shift. Um, close to similar conditional use, there is none as far as I understand. There are no other dispensaries um, in the city limits. Um, the required uh, license, it's a card license, um, and um, don't ask me to tell you what card stands for, but the applicants can, they're here. Um, any anticipated noise, light, odors extending beyond, absolutely not. Um, we'll go into the odor, because sometimes it's always a concern, you know, dispensers can smell like cannabis. They don't, but we can, we'll go into that as we get further in um, the presentation. Um, and then any large vehicles, no, um, all, all deliveries are done through uh, basically sprinter vans. Um, nothing larger than that. It, um, this is a proposed elevation of what the front's going to look like. Um, I think maybe instead of doing um, the front stop in metal, we may be doing it in the AFS, um, but that's a, a good rendering of about what we we're wanting it to look like. As you can see, the, the blue awning is going to be gone. Um, next slide, please. So here's a uh, proposed design for the interior again. This is not a, a typical, you know, I don't know um, say why the board's been to dispensary, but this is like a smoke shop or a head shop. This is a, a high-end experience. Um, and so the design is going to be reflective of that. Um, so that's the reception where you come in and check your license and then they'll buzz you into the, there you go, the sales floor. Again, expecting about 10 POS stations, um, number of displays, and, um, you know, based in coordination with the applicant for the licensees, we're going to be you know, creating a design that's important to them um, based on the, what their aesthetic is. Go to the next slide, please. Right, just another different option, you know, to kind of give them a little, a little color, a little pizzazz in there. Um, you know, when eventually there's going to be a lot more dispensaries in the area, um, some of the larger companies will be coming in in a few years. We want this to stand out and, and be competitive, um, you know, for the long term. Um, that's the logo, Capital District Cannabis and Wellness, as I said, that's who's going to be operating it. Um, security. So um, security protocol is very important in cannabis, obviously. Um, you know, there's going to be a licensed security contractor, security guards on premises. Um, and then the presence alone of security guards really helps alleviate any, um, you know, any issues of loitering. That's always the number one. So make sure nobody's loitering outside, nobody's smoking cannabis outside, and that's what the security guards are there to enforce. Um, next slide, please. Um, the responsibility of security guards, I'll just go through really quick. They monitor activity in the facility. Um, they also monitor the perimeter constantly for suspicious persons or anybody casing it. Um, they survey the surroundings during shipping and receiving. Secure delivery, when there is a shipping or receiving, two security guards are outside at all times just to make sure that um, the optics that they're there. Um, make sure the security systems work. It's a very high-tech security system. Um, they conduct internal external patrols every two hours. Um, anybody who's in and out, they make sure they're authorized to be there. Um, make sure that the uh, SOPs, the center operating procedure are being followed. And they routinely check for damage, make sure all the cameras are working. And then obviously reporting intruders or emergencies. Um, this is, we don't need to go through this, it's kind of detailed, but just the policy, you know, visitor policy, what the security guards protocols are, after hours monitoring. The system will be um, online with the police department, so they'll have full online monitoring as well um, in real time. Um, we can go to the next one. So that's the security plan. That's the, the first page security plan. It shows where all the limited access areas are, it shows um, any intrusion areas. Um, and it's it, it's set so that only people of authorization are able to access certain areas. The next, uh, so that is the surveillance. And as you can see, it is 
100% surveillance on exterior and almost 100% surveillance on interior, except for bathrooms. Um, there's no area that does not have uh, cameras or surveillance um, at the facility. Go to the next week, please. So secure delivery, again, this is very important um, because this concern always comes up as far as when deliveries happen. And um, again, it's gonna be a truck delivery of a sprinter van um, about once or twice per week. Um, the important part is that there's always gonna be two employees present from the, um, from the operator. And an hour before the transportation gets there, they're, they're on notice. So it's not like there's a possibility where transportation is gonna pull up and nobody's gonna be there. It's gonna be sitting you know, full of cannabis or cash or whatnot. Um, it's a very, very efficient process. Um, and then, like I, I mentioned, the security guards will be there as well. Um, and they're always outside um, take when deliveries come in. And you know, on top of that, we're gonna have that security gate that'll, that'll um, clear the close once they get in there. Um, odor mitigation. There really is no odor when it comes to dispensaries. Um, you know, most odor is going to come from manufacturing or cultivation facility. Um, everything that's coming into the dispensary is sealed. Um, it's sealed in a bag or it's sealed in a canister or it's sealed in you know, a plastic container. So it's very unlikely for there to be any odor um, emanating from the facility. In fact, um, regulations state that as long as it's all fully pre-sealed packaging, no odor mitigation is necessary. Um, however, we do have protocols in place. So if there is odor, if somebody's walking the dog and they smell something, the dispensary manager is in charge of uh, making sure, okay, um, what, you know, where did the odor come from? Is it, is it from here? Is it maybe from down the street? Was somebody driving by possibly? Um, you know, where did it come from? And once they search that out and find out what the issue is, um, then they figure out a way uh, to fix it. But we've been doing this for a long time. We do all types of cannabis facilities. Very, very rarely um, is there an, you know, an order issue in a dispensary. Um, and that's because of the next uh, slide, please. Um, so uh, that's, that's basically the procedure in case there is a complaint. Um, and that just goes over you know, what the procedure is. Um, yeah, so, so the order mitigation, the way these facilities are designed, uh, first of all, the, the vault where all the cannabis is stored, that has its own environmental control. So there's always gonna be air circulation and it's its own system that avoids any static in here. Um, also, there's exhaust in the building, they're filtered exhaust, they're either a charcoal exhaust, uh, a charcoal filter, or uh, even a carbon filter at the next level, which scrubs all contaminants out of the air. And as you can see, the exhaust sometimes do have a high pressure uh, fog system, usually used for uh, cultivation facilities, but in the event that uh, OCM requires order mitigation, this facility will be installing the cannabuster system as well. Um, now I'll go into the standards, your standards for, for um, approving conditional use. Um, again, standard number one, is it consistent with the provisions of the code? Um, and you know, our answer is yes. Dispensary, you know, it is considered as a controlled substance. Um, you know, I think it's controlled substance retail, that what it's considered under. Um, so obviously it is consistent because it is in the code for us to be able to get a conditional uh, permit out of uh, through the code. Um, next. Uh, next one, please. So standard two, so would not result in a random pattern of development with little relationship to existing or planned development. Um, as you're all well aware, that corridor along Central, um, you know, there's Home Depot, there's a number of fast foods, and there's a CVS. It's it's all retail, um, and that's really at the end of the day what a dispensary is. It's just a retail shop. Um, this is not going in residential area. It's not going in an industrial. It's going where it should, which is a, a retail um, use zone. Uh, standard number three would not cause negative fiscal or environmental impacts on adjacent properties. Um, I think on the contrary, um, there's been plenty of data to support that dispensaries um, actually create a positive fiscal uh, impact on the neighboring environment. People will come to the dispensary, they'll go next door, get something to eat at the restaurant, um, they'll stop at a, a neighboring you know, retail establishment, um, they bring in foot traffic, you know, car traffic. So it's it's actually a very important um, aspect to for community with um, you know that, that has been the retail corridor. Um, standard four is consistent with purposes and objectives of the zoning code and character of the neighborhood. Um, yeah, as stated again, since the neighborhood is almost exclusively retail, um, and that's what dispensary is, we feel that standard four is met as well because the character of the neighborhood won't be altered. Um, right previously it was a vacuum store and now it's a cannabis store. It really is not much there's not much difference there. Um, actually speaking. 
Um, and then standard five, but not result in harmful cumulative effect or impact similar conditional use. Um, there's really no harmful effect that it has. Um, in fact, near dispensaries, um, crime and goes down and you know retail goes up. Um, I think one of the reasons why we were in an event um, in New York City a couple weeks ago, and they had showed us all the statistics about when dispensaries are, are developed. There's really no crime around there because they know that there's surveillance with these super high definition cameras all around. So um, it definitely would not result in any harmful uh, impacts. And standard six, we're not placing excessive burden on public improvement. So we're not requiring additional water, no additional power, no additional gas, everything that's there previously is perfectly uh, sustainable. Um, again, we're having our own on-site security. And the one important thing is with traffic, you know, we, we did a traffic count and there's about 30,000 cars a day going back and forth on that corridor. Um, we're figuring between 350 to 500 customers per day, um, you know, depending on the day, day of the week and time. Um, so that really is negligible based on the overall traffic impact. Um, again, Central Avenue is a major retail corridor. Um, and, you know, if you're talking about 350 to 500 people coming in there based on 30,000, um, it really has, uh, you know, almost zero impact on that. And standard seven, um, provide necessary and desirable service. Um, you know, this is something, obviously, it's, it's legal, it's new, but it's legal. And, you know, it is something that, you know, consumers in, in cannabis, cannabis consumers in, in uh, Albany, sorry, should have access to, um, you know, if Albany residents have to drive to neighboring towns or, you know, other dispensaries in other counties or even over Massachusetts, I think that it's, this is a better and more convenient way for residents to be able to um, obtain cannabis. And on top of that, there's a very, um, you know, large tax profit that comes back to the city. Um, Number of cities across the country have been able to, you know, build new infrastructure, schools, new police cars, tennis courts, whatever it is, uh, based on the revenue being generated from the cannabis tax. Um, that's the presentation. I did provide a couple of dispensers that we've done just so you see kind of our, our end product. These are not renderings, they're real pictures, um, just other dispensers we've done over here on the East Coast. Um, let me just go through them really quickly. Um, there's another one. Um, next slide, four nine. Of other ones, I think there's maybe one or two left. Yeah, so just so you see that what we're putting in is going to be a high end um, facility. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Um, I know we do not have action on this one. I think we're waiting for a comment from the Albany County Planning Board and the interdepartmental review. Those are two notes I see, but do we have any comments from the public on this? No. No comments from the public. Very interesting. Spent a lot of time watching uh, the movement of the industry here in New York since the laws have passed. And thank you for coming out tonight to present to the public. Great, thank you. And the next meeting, I believe, which is March 9th, um, and the board will be able to take action on that meeting. March? Yeah. I'm sorry, May 9th. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's been a long day. Yeah. Hope it's not March 9th. Then we're waiting for a long time. <clears throat> Certainly. Any questions for the board? I didn't want to neglect my, my colleagues. So I'm sure, a lawyer that has some questions. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've been following this legislation since its inception. So, but I do have a question. I'm trying to find it. Um, I understand what you're saying that the, yes, the corridor where you're proposing the dispensary is um, retail oriented, but across the street are residences and homes from that, that location, as well as a school and a park. I am trying to find the variance of where the dispensary can be, because I know it can't be around schools or parks, but have you guys- we, Of course, yeah, that was okay. done um, That was done during our pre-assessment when we, um, we worked with um, with DASNY's representatives as well in the real estate team to make sure um, that's outside of the buffer. There's a buffer where it has to be away from schools or you know, child care centers, uh, you know, churches, that type of thing. And so it, it does meet those standards. We okay. make sure, yeah, we, um, we had a proximity map drawn up for that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't know if the they supply that in their application. Um, I don't know if the proximity map is in there, but I, you know, we, we do know and can confirm that it's not within the distance okay. of schools or um, house of worship, but state also won't issue a license for a place if it's, if it they wouldn't even let it get that far. Yeah. Um, I've got a 
just a question on, on the uh, organizational structure of this yeah. because what is your role compared to the ICC? So, the owner of the developer, yeah, your exactly. So, so DASNY um, is try, I'll try to make it simple. So, <laughs> DASNY hired us as the design build firm, and so our client is actually DASNY. And DASNY is leasing the, um, the building, so they're the, the tenant, and then they're subleasing to Capital District Cannabis Loans. And um, once we are done, once once we're done with the, the project and the build out um, for DASNY, um, you know, they hand everything over to the to the licensee. We're taking a more proactive approach working with the licensee because it's just it's it's their project, you know, for all intents and purposes, and it's um, you know, I think a collaborative effort. Basically, we're all in this together, right? So when you have, you know, DASNY has been working hard on the real estate and the procurement of it and the, the uh, negotiation with the lease with the landlords. And then we come on and deal with the, the, as you see, the interior design, the overall architecture, and then the eventual build out, hand it over to them, and they hand it over to the power license. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You're done. Yeah. Unless we come back to the town and want to say hi. But yeah, other than that, we're done. And, and your relationship with that. Correct. Okay. Yes, correct. Okay. Yeah, sure. Thanks. Thank you. All right, great. Thank you very much. <coughs> Next up, I see is another Hirschberg Hirschberg property. Do we want to defer as well? Push the end. Yeah, no, no, Hirschberg and Hirschberg is saying no. This is 1361. This is 1361. Correct. No. Unless you're letting it. I certainly do not. <laughs> So we're now into our meeting agenda. This is an application for 1361 Broadway, project number 00517, Army Prima Lost LLC, Hirschberg and Hirschberg, mixed use. Uh, is this mixed use community highway or conditional use? Which is conditional use? Mixed use community and urban. Community, community urban. You guys are looking to demolish three existing parking structures totaling 6,444 square feet in accommodation of construction of 200,000. 274,875 square foot building to include 220 dwelling units, 135 on the first, first floor parking spaces, and 97 surface parking spaces. Our actions tonight board for consideration will be uh, seek what we may receive and determination of significance. First appearance on the agenda. Show it to us. Thank you. My name is Bill Mafrici with Hirschberg and Hirschberg. Uh, like I said, the project is uh, a five-story apartment building uh, containing 220 units. Located 360, or sorry, 1361 Broadway. Outskirts of the city line. You might know this formally as, as the old uh, Albany International Health site uh, adjacent on the, on the south side of that. The, this is the, the site as it exists to a number of parking spaces, um, a couple of building structures, about 600 square feet, with a central relocated pond. This is the proposed site plan. Um, kind of border the same development as, as the existing parking, demolish the two structures, and the L shaped building on the bottom is the 220 unit apartment building. Uh, there's access and all parking on the ground level, and then there's four residential uh, stories above.
all the utilities exist with, with some improvements. Um, will conform to the city's stormwater management regulations. The sanitary sewer will be brought in from Broadway and all of the, um, the water service and added to fire protection. What we're seeing here is a sky elevation from Broadway looking at the, the interior out of the building. Um, as you can see, the existing pond is the focal point, uh, and also at the corner building is the main entrance to, to the structure. This is the ground floor, like I said, um, with several accesses, um, three <coughs> for the interior parking. Um, at the corner of the L is, is the core. Um, the main entrance to go upstairs to, to future lobby area and amenities. The second floor, which is actually the first main floor of the living uh, living area, shows the amenities that are proposed in turquoise at the interior corner of the building. As you go on to the third and fourth floors uh, are similar in layout, containing one and two bedroom uh, apartments. And then we jump to uh, third, yeah, third, fourth, and, and fifth floors are, are, are all similar. The rooftop. Is also planned to have a, um, a deck with some some sort of amenities up there, seating deck visual. The, the, the views from there looking into it's all being pretty nice, especially if we're up um, five stories. These are the architectural elevations. Um, the, the patterns are good. Going to be broken up in, in uh, different shades vertically. Um, you can see closely the, the garage on the lower level is, is going to be open but visually screened. So you, you won't be able to, yeah, it's going to be an architecturally closed, um, but you're not going to be able to see any of the vehicles parked within that. The other elevations show um, peaks where rooftop equipment will be hidden from view. Uh, if somebody can see up the five stories. And with that, I'll open it to the board. For any questions. Thank you. Any questions from the board? Uh, this is owned by the same people who own the uh, old expansion. Well, they have some expansion up there. Correct. Army Mills people lost is is the owner and they own the adjacent property that they currently. Okay. And are there other facilities, uh, you know, recreational facilities or anything like that that they can share, or is this going to be pretty much a standard? Uh, I don't believe the adjacent okay. facility has any outdoor recreation. There might be a picnic area or something. Right. But if there's no basketball court or there, either. Um, but the pond will be. The pond is going to be maintained. Lots of sitting areas. Fight uh, uh, <coughs> uh, so with the fire, you know, covered by parking and things of that nature. Can we confirm if the IDA is involved in this project or not? I'm sorry. The IDA, IDA is involved? Uh, I, I don't know that. I don't well. know if they are. I can certainly find out from you. Okay. Um, Chris, just I just got one question. The the exterior is it? Am I seeing right? Is there a lot of fenestration? Uh, and what will the exterior walls be? Uh, at this point, um, I, I, it's probably going to be a mixture of. of uh, Ethos system and metal panels. 
Uh, there are different shades and different colors. As we go on, we can give you samples or get a better rendering um, as to exactly how it is going to look. The elevations now are black and white. And really don't show you the depth of, of the elevation. Yeah, agreed. <laughs> <laughs> well, the first elevation looks like it's brick. It's kind of a reddish color, right? Uh, yeah, the, the rendering shows it. That, 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 there you go. Yeah. That kind of looks a little bit like the old taxi bill. Yeah. But that's not necessary. That was very no. industrial. <coughs> it's a few more trees, but other than that, it's a <laughs> And those are all windows, not balconies, correct? Correct. The black and white one really looks like balconies. That's why I have the question. I guess the other question I'd had is um, because of the number of units, there's affordable units required. And are they designated any particular locations or no? And you know, number of units, you know, number of bedrooms, et cetera? Uh, yeah, we will. Uh, we will conform to those four unit requirements. They haven't been established as yet. We're aware, we're aware of the move to them. Okay. Well, it'll be under the it'll be under the five percent previously. Um, that note was provided to, to Dan, so I know that he was going to be amending the, the plans as well to show that. So it'll be under the, the previous um, standards from the in the USDO. Thank you to the board. Do we have any comments from the public? We do not. We do not. All right. Action time. First recommended action is to declare lead agency for CEPRA, the county board. Uh, is there a motion? So moved. Second. Will be state formality. It has been moved and properly seconded that the planning board serve as lead agency for CEPRA. Are there any questions from the board? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Those that opposed say no. Unanimous. Second action is the uh, secret determination of significance, negative declaration. Is there a motion? So moved. There's Seconded. It's been moved by Vanessa Gilliard and <coughs> Paul for secret determination of significance, negative declaration. Are there any questions on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Those that oppose, say no. The motion carries. Thank you. Next up, Project 0051516 Sheridan Avenue. Oh, I skipped one. Oh, sorry. I went ahead too fast. All right. 00514, 136 Fuller Road. Applicant is 136 Fort Road, LLC. Jeff Hoffman. Hey, All right. Um, the proposal is demolition of one water tower and adjoining pump house. Uh, the actions under consideration are for secret determination of significance demolition review. This is also the first appearance. 
How are you doing, everyone? Um, so my name is Jeff Hoffman. I'm with High Ground Industrial. I'm uh, on, here on behalf of uh, 136 Fuller Road, LLC. Um, as the council member alluded to, we are looking to demolish a ancillary <coughs> structure located at 136 Fuller Road, consisting of a water tower and um, a small pump house, roughly 200 square feet. Uh, next slide, please. Um, as you can see, the road, the, full, the, the building is located on Fuller Road on the north side of I 90 between the on off ramps for I 90 and the railroad tracks, uh, right on the city limits, um, right on the other side of the tracks is Colony, I believe. Uh, the area is zoned as light industrial. Um, just a little background on the whole water tower situation. The water tower is a 150,000 gallon water, uh, raised water tank, and it was built in 1955. Um, can you go back to the other slide just because there's a couple things I want to point out. Thank you. Um, the tank was suspected to be installed basically uh, because the water pressure wasn't uniform from the city main. So this was put in um, in 1960, a new 16-inch main was put on Fuller Road, basically giving better water pressure to the building. And then in 1962, they installed a new water tank, which is on the left side of the building. You kind of see it sticking up there. Um, that one's a 250,000 gallon water tank, and that is actually took the place of the tall one you see on the right side of the picture, um, basically taking over the fire uh, suppression system and the domestic water. Um, since then, uh, the, the tall one, the 150,000 gallon water tank, has been obsolete. Um, so basically, it's kind of an eyesore, um, and it's just, uh, again, obsolete in nature. There are some concerns about its age and the uh, integrity of the structure. So, the, which is the reason why they want to take it down. Next slide, please. Uh, again, I mentioned it was built in 1955, which is 68 years old. Um, the proposed use for the site um, after the demo demolition of the water tower, they're just going to turn it into a green space. Again, it's obsolete. They have no need for it. It's just kind of sitting there. So once it's down, we're, we'll take the water tower down, um, rough grade the area, and seed it. Um, as for any demolition debris associated with the, uh, the work, um, the metal is going to be from the water tank is going to be cut up, sent to a local licensed scrap yard. Any C and D debris is going to go to a local licensed landfill. Next slide, please. Um, this right here basically just kind of gives a rundown of the work areas. Um, you know, the red line shows the you know exclusion zone where the, where only authorized personnel can enter. The yellow lines are going to show basically the area, the drop area of where this thing's going to be pulled down um, and basically cut up. Um, we're expecting the demolition to take about two weeks. Um, Basically, we'll be implement, implementing a site control, such as dust suppression, perimeter fencing, verifying any, all the necessary disconnects have been done, which I believe you already have, well, no two of you have already been done. Uh, you can see the, um, the uh, tanks just behind the water tower. Those were the uh, propane tanks that supplied the heat to the pump house. Um, those have been since removed. Uh, electric has been disconnected and water has been disconnected going to that um, tank for years at this point. Um, then they, again, site restoration, we are just going to be uh, removing structure, rough grading the area and seeding it. And 136 Fuller Road LLC may or may not do something with it after uh, that location, but that's it. Any questions? Thank you, any questions for the board? Seeing none, any questions from the public? No questions or comments. Any questions from the staff? Comments from the staff? Excellent. Um, we'll move forward our, with our recommended action, which is um, a secret determination of significant negative declaration. Is there a motion? So moved. So second. Second. It's been moved by Glenissa Gilliard and Martin. And seconded by Martin Hall to make a negative declaration on secret determination of significance. Are there any questions on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Those that oppose say no. 
Motion carries. Our second action for demolition review under section 375-5057. Uh, is there a motion to approve the- So moved, so moved. <laughs> is there a second? Second. <laughs> it has been moved by Roman Kachira and seconded by Vanessa that uh, we approve the demolition review. Uh, all in favor, are, are there any questions on the motion? Seeing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 I'll say no. Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you. You had to get one in, Chris. <laughs> All good. Yep. All right. Now we can do zero zero five one five sixteen shared in that. So I have to start by recusing myself. We're great friends. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I would have a bias. <laughs> Please have uh, counsel and the recording note that committee member Lanessa Gilliard is recused from Project 11515. Right. So, how do you pronounce your last name? Uh, I'll pronounce my full name. My first name is Layla. My last name is Kios. Layla Kios. Welcome. Well, thank you. Absolutely. So we're looking at doing a little something, something in the mixed use downtown zoning district, <coughs> uh, painting um, about 277 square foot mural on the side wall located on Chapel Street of the restaurant known as Yard, Hatchet, House, and Bar. Correct. Our actions today will be to consider uh, secret determination of significance for the approval of the wall display. This is your first appearance before this board. Yes. All right, the show is yours. All right, great, thank you. Um, if we could start by uh, just going to the next slide. Okay, thank you. Um, so just a little bit of background. Um, the mural uh, that I'm proposing to do on this uh, side of the building, which is the side where my front entrance is located, which is right underneath that awning. Uh, this mural was part of the Capitalize Albany Facade Improvement Grant. I was an applicant uh, of that grant and the grant was awarded in May of 2022. And as you may, may be aware, the, the purpose of that grant is to provide funding to improve the storefronts of downtown businesses and make them more attractive and interesting to the public. Not that my space isn't already, but you know, certainly a mural uh, would help, as you can see from this side of the building, um, it is a, is a big blank space. Um, if you are standing at the corner of Sheridan and Chapel and you you're sort of even set back further from the parking lot, you have this nice big view of a blank space. Um, and the idea here was to put a very colorful mural that would uh, bring some color and creativity to that side of the building. Now, a condition to applying for the facade grant was uh, that you had landlord consent and approval of the building owner. So I own the business, but I don't own the building. My landlord is Redburn Development Partners. Uh, when I submitted my application for the grant, I had to submit a signed consent form by them. Uh, so uh, once I received the award letter in May of 2022, it took some time to kind of line myself up with all the Center Gallery, which spearheads uh, the, the murals in downtown. Um, and I shared with them my vision for the mural and uh, then in the fall, they started a search for an artist and then an artist was secured in December and you can't do a mural in the winter time. So um, it took us a few months to, to wait and do the application process um, uh, to get here. Um, I did share the design review. So if you go to the next slide, please. 
Oh, I'm sorry. This is where I was saying earlier, if you stand on the corner of Sheridan Chapel and you look up the hill, there's this big wide um, like space. <coughs> um, next slide, please. Okay, that shows the location of my, um, of my space uh, right there, sort of in between it all with the First Church of Albany across the street and um, next to the Hampton Hotel. So if you go to the very next slide, thank you. So this is the proposed mural. I shared this with um, my landlord um, prior to the planning meeting. I did get confirmation with that by them uh, by email that they really enjoy this design. And um, I also submitted a letter uh, to the planning board separately by email tomorrow or yesterday um, that sets forth their written consent for the mural concept in general. So this mural, uh, the work would be done by um, Juliana Halidi. She was the artist selected by Albany Center Gallery. The idea that I had was to create some sort of uh, vibrant garden scene. So Juliana took that and literally ran with it. She did a lot of research um, about native flora and fauna. Uh, she uh, researched uh, with representatives from the Pine Bush Preserve, the New York State Archives, the New York State Division for Historic Preservation, and the DEC. So the floral elements that you see here are uh, native to New York. And you, of course, see uh, the front of the butterfly right there, sort of in the top right corner. Um, Juliana is an accomplished artist. She's a SUNY Albany grad and um, has received several awards for her artwork. Um, the paint that would be used on this mural is a resilience exterior acrylic paint. It is a high quality finish. It has something called moisture guard built into it so that it prevents um, some early moisture development. There would be a clear coat on top of the paint to seal the mural and protect it from the elements and allow the mural to breathe so that moisture doesn't sit underneath the paint. The approximate duration for the mural would be minimally nine to 12 years. It could be longer depending upon you know, weather elements and exposure. Um, Albany Center Gallery tells me that they use this particular paint on 99% of the murals that they put in and around downtown Albany. And this mural would also become part of the Capitol Walls project. So if there's any questions or comments. <clears throat> Thank you, any questions from board? Roman, you good? Questions from the public? No questions, no comments. Comments from staff? I'm ready. Um, just to confirm what the applicant said, that they did provide a letter uh, from the owner, uh, Redburn Development, as to their sign off um, on the project. And then um, also just reiterating that the mural will create visual interest, enhance the streetscape, and it does not create any negative impacts, uh, including uh, threat to public health or safety, uh, or or safety to uh, or or safety to vehicular, bicycle, or pedestrian traffic, uh, or create any congestion, or create noise, sound, light, reflection, glare, shading, flickering, vibration, or odor impacts to nearby properties. Thank you. Our first action is for a secret determination of significance, negative declaration. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? I'll second it. <laughs> I was waiting for you, Roman. I was waiting for you. I couldn't find the mute button. <laughs> well, good. It has been moved and properly second to uh, give a negative declaration on the determination of significance for CICRA. Uh, are there any questions? Seeing none, uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Motion carried. Second item. This is for approval of the wall display. 
Is there a motion? Yeah, so moved. Is there a second? Not a second. This is... Yeah, I'm oh, that's right. Oh, that's right. Yeah. I keep looking at me. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. It has been moved by Roman Kachera and seconded by Martin Hall to, uh, to approve the wall display. Any questions on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Say no. Motion carried. Aye. Great. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Absolutely. Next up. Uh, Project number 0048466 Colvin Ave, A Metro Self Storage, Colvin Ave LLC, Hirschberg and Hirschberg. I saw Mr. Hirschberg walk in. Thank you. This will allow a self storage facility to occupy 75,550 square foot building on the site. If there are no actions under consideration. This is the second appearance of the bike you were here at the end of last month. I'll seek it for the larger site. We're all yours. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Congratulations on your new chairmanship. <laughs> the, uh, um, this project was part of a larger presentation we made for uh, secret purposes, which included uh, 64 Colvin Avenue, this project, and uh, a project on Corner Central and Colvin. Uh, that uh, we, we tied those together because of Corner Seeker regulations, we can't separate them out and treat them as separate. They're all part of the, under the same ownership. So this is a continuation for 66 Colvin. This building people will recognize is the large armory building that uh, was Army Guard before they relocated to Central Avenue. And it uh, um, is, um, it is uh, visible from Colvin Avenue, obviously, and also from the intersection of Central and Colvin. Um, the applicant proposes to remodel the building internally to have 502 approximate storage facilities inside of various sizes. And if you go to the next slide, it, this shows that's the existing plan. That's that's how the building exists today. Um, and uh, the, the external uh, dimensions of the building will not change. There's no addition to the building at all. Um, and we are uh, going to modify some of the uh, entrances and islands on, on the site. If you turn to the next slide, this shows how we would do it. We're, we're extending an island across the back to separate it from the parking at the very rear of the site is going to be serving the uh, the parcel at 64 uh, Coleman Avenue. So uh, we're separating it off. We're building a large new island. People familiar with the site will know that that's where there's uh, the uh, gas uh, pumps were. That long uh, canoe shaped island is actually all new green spaces we added there to replace that island uh, on the left-hand side of the building. Um, the stormwater management system is going to be increased in size. Uh, stormwater has been a problem here. Uh, we think it's primarily from the parking lot to the left of here because if people are there during a the rainstorm, it bypasses the storage of the, of the chambers and ends up in uh, Colvin Avenue. We're putting, expanding the size of the stormwater system. We do it obviously with the Department of Water Water Supply, uh, and we think that is a good use. Uh, I have another plan here that shows uh, next sheet. Uh, it's the landscape plan. We are adding some trees down the island. Um, we're adding a cluster of trees at the right hand corner of the green space, separating us from the frontage on Central Avenue. Uh, we are adding uh, some smaller shrubs around the building, but primarily we're adding uh, significant trees because we think that um, that built the height of that building requires taller vegetation to around it than it does served by the uh, lower vegetation. Next plan is uh, the lighting plan. Uh, it shows that the lighting will light the outside of the building. It uses wall packs on a building. That's that's the uh, 
uh, fixture that's the bottom fixture. The top fixture is going to hold um, that'll light the entire outside of the building. Uh, for security purposes, there are, those lights will probably stay on all night. The ones on the building, the ones in the parking lot will probably be set to go off like 11 p.m. But again, uh, at the building side, we want to leave them on for the purpose of security. It's a large building. We'll obviously have alarm systems and set to protect people's storage stuff in there, but we don't want to leave ourselves open for vandalism, et cetera. And the next plan is the building elevation. Uh, Dan Sanders repaired this. And what this does is it shows how they're going to take what is a, a gray CMU wall and uh, add uh, the material on the bottom is a new material added to the building. The one on the top is a paint job on the existing CMU. And the CMU itself will get a background color that's slightly different than the CM, the standard uh, uh, concrete masonry units. And the next one shows the elevations from uh, the side. Uh, that's the south elevation looking across the parking lot. If you're standing on um, Anthony Street looking into the site, this is the elevation you'll see uh, of this building. And uh, so this is the floor plan of uh, the building floor plan. We only showed the first floor plan. I don't think I I a little more of them. This shows the units separated in there on the first floor. People familiar with the building know there's a mezzanine above that used to have uh, a, rest, a fancy restaurant. I used to have a um, uh, hair salon and other things up on a mezzanine level. That's all going to be turned into storage units. There's no other use taking place in the building other than storage units and a small office uh, that will be used for normal things, which is going to be like offering a packing materials for people um, for sale that they need them to pack stuff up and move them. Uh, I think that completes my um, PowerPoint and we're prepared to answer any questions at this point. Thank you. Any, any questions from the board? What's the circulation uh, plan? How do people, where do they park? How do they well, again, uh, people familiar with the self storage know that the, the parking requirements are very minimal. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, if, you, if you use the, uh, the standard for it, um, there's, a, there's a, a standard made up by the association that uh, for the self storage facility owners, which says for this entire site, we probably need six parking spots one for an employee and five available for people. But uh, we have more parking spots than that because the building's so spread out, um, we don't want somebody to have to park in front. They're, they'll be able to enter from, from various um, entries, the one closest to where they want to go in the building. So there, there's actually take place on the bottom or the south side of the building, one closest to Colvin Avenue, on the north side of the building, uh, along that side there, there's an entrance in there and down the, left-hand side of the building, there's a, there are two entrances in there. So people could park uh, near their facility and come in. Uh, uh, it, like I said, it's more than you need for a facility this size, uh, a self-storage facility. We did the self-storage facility at 40 Russell Road, the, the one that uh, the, uh, value the value space, you can see it from uh, I-90, the, oh, the blue cool. building next to uh, uh, price chopper. That one, we provided seven parking spots total on the site, and I and I've been up there a number of times. We we do the annual water inspection. Very rarely, are more than two or three spots filled on it. Just the nature of it is that people won't come and visit their their stuff in their storage uh, very often. They they come to pick some up and drop stuff off, and that's uh, so the, the parking requirements are very minimal. We have more parking than we normally require just to make it accessible. On various sides of the building. Okay, thanks. And the and, and, and the site of this project is within the yellow, turquoise, and purple blue lines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, there's a common easement that uh, goes where that the center, the yellow line is the center of that driveway. That's a 20 foot wide driveway that's going to be shared between 60 Colvin Avenue and 64 Colvin Avenue. Number one, it reduces the number of curb cuts we need. Right. Um, and uh, because this has very low traffic, 
generated. Uh, there's no problem having the uh, uh, the apartment share share that entry. Thank you, Stephanie. Additional comments. Um, the couple comments I'd like to make is speaking to the um, cross connection easement. The applicant was provided some uh, review comments on the development plan review. They did address it. However, um, it needs a little more attention and a response from the applicant to the cross access connection. They answered the easement question, but not so much for the cross access within the parking. Um, the other uh, update uh, that needs still to be made is the access lanes are still shown uh, to exceed 20 feet um, in the site plan, so that needs to be addressed. Um, there's a few other uh, uh, items that need to be addressed within the site plan after the response has been received. Um, they include the landscaping lighting plans. Uh, they also include um, uh, the additional uh, details regarding snow storage requirement to ensure that the landscaping, fencing, and other screening devices are protected from the damage during the snow storage operations. Um, the, the trash uh, to be stored inside the building and loaded onto garbage trucks through the loading docks. Um, the applicant also needs to pr revise the elevation plans to include the missed elevation um, as requested by the planning department. Um, and they uh, are, uh, they did mention that they'd be requesting a waiver uh, pertaining to the parking location. Thank you. Um, there's no recommended action tonight. Board members, I did want to point out that some of the information that was just discussed uh, contained in a series of letters that be in the park packet. Thank you. Thank you much. I don't think you need to move. You need to stay. <laughs> uh, we're going back to. One one zero zero five one one Nurses Middle College Charter High School Capital Region. What happened to Mr. Grant? Okay. He could pull a seat up right here. We'll have the he should because his name is on the agenda. <laughs> Meet him at the table. We're gonna get this right. This is Jim Graham from Synthesis, the architect. I'm Dan Hirschberg from Hirschberg and Hirschberg. This is Andy Brick from Brick Law Offices. Um, we're here today to represent the 50 Beaver Street project. We appeared at last month's meeting. Uh, since that time, we made some great progress in regard to the transportation issue. Um, CDTA uh, has been brought on board to have a uh, universal access agreement with us. Uh, we made this up to show where the bulk of the transportation comes from. Um, Albany, which is, this is based upon 78 applications that have already been processed. Uh, um, we hope that um, before it's full opens, it'll be twice that, almost 150. But Albany is 62% of them, as anticipated. Albany is uh, the uh, big contributor of people that um, would seek this education. And the addition provides the CDTA pass. So CDTA buses will come from all different directions. You might imagine there are people that live on Second Avenue or on Central Avenue or in Arbor Hill. There are different bus routes that'll come there. Some stop on, on um, South Pearl Street near Beaver or at Beaver. Some, most of them stop at uh, State and Pearl. Uh, uh, it's, it, it's called on the uh, CDA buses, the Walgreens stop. I don't know why, because it used to be a Walgreen or it is not anymore, but again, it was called a Walgreens stop. So whatever, um, they'll be dropped off there. Troy and Lansingburg do provide, there's 15% from there, primarily from Troy, three or three students from Lansingburg. Uh, they provide yellow buses or a van uh, and they'll, they'll arrive there. Uh, the school district is actually provides CDTA passes as does, uh, one of the school will provide CDA passes for them because it's quite convenient to go from uh, Schenectady with the uh, 
with the boot with the red bus uh, red bus plus to get here. It's a it's a, a very quick ride than than it used to be by bus. So we'll be able to get there and get off at uh, State and Pearl. Uh, the uh, and Waterbury and the Nans, we believe the school district will provide CDPA passes. And then there's five miscellaneous districts which have five students in them. So there's like one student from each district. <coughs> the district is supposed to provide transport, yellow bus transportation to them, but the school will provide CDK passes for any student that wants them if in fact uh, the yellow bus or van becomes inconvenient. Because I'm familiar with the busing because I ran a busing system for the Hebrew Catholic Capital District for 28 years. And Consequently, when people come in from smaller districts, they sometimes move all the students coming to all the parochial and private schools that they have to serve on one bus and has to make like 15 stops or 20 stops, which means that the bus route starts at 5.30 or 6 o'clock in the morning to make all the stops, which is inconvenient. You're dropped off at school before the school doors are even open sometimes. So these districts might do it a little bit better, but it might be inconvenient for people to use that. So the school provides CDK bus passes for anybody, because most of these communities do have CDK bus service. And uh, this is the transportation plan we laid out. Um, it's uh, all, par all parents will be, uh, will be educated. <laughs> I say that uh, advisedly. It's a school we have to educate people. We also have to educate the parents. Uh, to uh, not double park to drop their children off. No students be dropped off. Uh, uh, this will happen at would be an, or an orientation for school where the parents and the students will both attend and staff. You know, be made aware of the fact is of how the CDPA bus stop will be handled and where they come from. Uh, we will not allow any bus drop offs on Beaver Street, any drop offs on Beaver Street. And um, uh, we had determined that we're going to request for the police department to provide um, coverage for the first two days of school, just because uh, people are aware of how school starts in any school. The first couple of days of school are always a little hectic. So we'll ask the school, the police department to provide coverage for that, and the school is willing to pay for that coverage uh, as required. Um, the uh, Reserve parking spot in the garage because again you have a student that comes down sick and a parent has to come pick them up and they don't have any place to park. We're reserving one parking spot in that garage for six student pickup so that uh, if that has to happen, we made arrangements for that. Uh, the, uh, the the students uh, will all get what are called the all access CDG passes uh, and uh, we, and the transportation agreement is has. It's about to be ended until we, you know, we just got it. Uh, we just worked with CDK uh, last Thursday or Friday. They provided the agreement. The agreement will be assigned and we'll go forward with that. And CDK pass says they do have space on Broadway where we can direct the buses to turn around to, 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 to leave the site or want to wait while they're waiting to pick up their students. So we think the transportation plan works. It has not. We have not heard it's been reviewed yet by Bill Trudeau. We sent a copy to Bill, but we think that it hits most of the items that Bill was concerned about in, uh, in the beginning. So uh, we'll wait to hear from Bill whether it has any more comments. Yeah, this is a CDK agreement. It was set, set signed by CDK and sent on to us. So the, the school will, have, will sign it or has signed it already. I think they have one more. Multiple. There's two of them. Oh, okay. I have I have the building size. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's let's take a look at the building because <coughs> that's so important. This the one on the left is the ground floor, the parking level. And the one is called the second floor. It's the first habitable floor of the site. And that's laid out in the classrooms and common areas and offices. Uh, the next slide shows the third floor. The second and third floor are going to be occupied. What's called the first? It's called the first year layout. Those are the two floors we occupied for the first year. Because um, as the student population grows, as they add more grades, so the school will expand upward. 
so we have also show what's going to happen on the fourth and fifth floor. Um, I think. Yep. Here's a fourth year layout, and what it does is it shows how those levels will be adopted to handle at the full four year build up, those floors will be uh, occupied. Uh, we think it's a, a, a good use for this building, a good adaptable use. Uh, offices, as you know, downtown are quickly becoming hard to fill and hard to keep filled. Uh, a lot of these things are, a lot of these buildings are occupied by tenants who are, um, leases are soon coming up. We're on a year to year lease. So my, my guess is that this will be a, a good add on for. Uh, the occupation of the, the occupancy of the building. Uh, we were, I received a letter today from uh, the uh, water department saying they want a water and sewer report. I uh, applied to uh, the water department to send me the water usage figures from the last five years. And it appears from the office level use when it, when the, when the <coughs> building was relatively full, uh, we are could be using less water for the school than they will. So I don't think that presents any sewer or water problems for the building. And a building is is uh, uh, strictly you no know, again that uh, the build the building will all be updated to meet uh, uh, code requirements as per the education department. Uh, and uh, we think that addresses all of the issues internal to the building. Uh, there was one more issue that was raised at the last meeting. I I might wait until somebody else raises it, but I'll raise it myself because it is the proximity to a place where we have one beverage. And if you want, I, Andy Brick can address that issue. No, it's not a part. Not a part of ours. No. So, is that the last slide? That is the last slide. Thank you so much. Do we have any questions from the board? Yeah, just uh, Dan, if you could clarify for me the uses on the ground floor again. It's been a long time since I've been there. I know when you walk in the entrance doors, you have a small, small entrance way, uh, and then you have the elevator. What are the other uh, building improvements on that ground floor? I know you got the park ring, but then what is it? Just uh, stairwells and it's mechanical? Cool. An elevator lobby and a parking. I don't think there's anything else on that first level. The first level. Yeah, it's just the existing parking we maintain and used by the school. Okay. And Chris, um, do we have a, a comment from council regarding the Zach ground floor count as the building area? And therefore, you know, we can be considered as far as the uh, you know, New York State alcohol beverage control law for a building uh, being exclusively occupied. We can move into staff comments now and council is, I believe on Zoom with you. So if there's a, a comment from council or from staff on this particular item, we should entertain it now. I am here. This is something that I could look into and get back to you on. Repeat that again. She came back to us on it. Okay. As far as our comments, um, we refer back to Andy's um, letter earlier today. Um, the this should not preclude this application of the conditional use permit. Uh, uh, that specific stipulation from the SLA. Um, this is uh, an application for the conditional use permit per those standards. Um, Thank you. Are there any additional comments beyond uh, Roman's inquiry from staff? Um, the, the couple comments that we have uh, is just to reiterate that although the area occupied in the first year is less, the board will be taking action on the full proposed capacity um, of the four floors um, today. The interior renovations of the six floors will take place over a span of four years, as the applicant said. 
Um, the applicant has provided the transportation plan, which has been reviewed jointly by CDTA as well as the planning department. Uh, it does include the universal access agreement. Um, and um, as to the prior notes, the project does uh, appear to comply with the purpose statement of the mixed use downtown zoning district as well. So I heard you say that the transportation plan was provided. Has it been reviewed and endorsed by APD or is it just received? It is received by CDT and planning department. It has uh, not been received by uh, the traffic engineering division of APD yet. Okay. Uh, it is part of our uh, conditions. Understood. Just want to be clear. Do we have any questions from the public? Comments from the public? Um, we have uh, three people signed up to provide public comment. Signed. Let's get to the first. Hold it close. We have Jan Zidorian. Thank you, Jan. Just please repeat your name and address for the record. Sure, Jan Zidorian, 33 Spice Hill Boulevard, Half Moon, New York. Uh, good evening. Um, again, Jan Zidori. I'm the head of school and principal for the Nurses Middle College Charter High School Capital Region. And I'm here tonight to speak a little bit about uh, my background, the mission of the school, um, why Beaver Street for us, and also um, some of the feedback we received from community partners and parents uh, as well. So I've been an uh, administrator, educator for over 30 years, um, both Schenectady as a counselor, teacher, and coach and uh, the North County School District as an educational administrator. For me, uh, professionally, this is an opportunity of a lifetime um, to start a unique school focused on nursing uh, that provides an opportunity of a lifetime for students of diverse backgrounds uh, that really, I believe, will change the trajectory of their lives. Uh, our school will be a model for other schools in the area, demonstrating how schools can adapt to meet to the needs of changing job market and provide students with the skills they need to succeed in the workplace. On a personal level, um, I'm a kidney transplant recipient. Um, I'll be celebrating six years, nine months, May 1st. Um, my brother was the donor. Um, the doctors at Albany Medical Center were incredible, um, but it was the nurses' day-to-day -day care that took care of me and, and even more importantly, my brother. So I have a profound respect for the profession. So it combines my passions of education along with passion and respect for the nursing field. The school itself is a replication of a successful model from Providence, Providence, Rhode Island, who's been up and running. The school's been up and running for during their 11th year this year, a very successful school, um, producing uh, students that are graduating into the professional nursing uh, programs as well as professional healthcare fields. The mission of the school is to provide a diverse and professional working nurse force to support better healthcare outcomes in the capital region uh, communities while also providing long-term workforce shortage solution. We've removed barriers to access for students of diverse backgrounds in the CAP region. There's no cost to families. All students enrolling, enrolling in grade nine are eligible, no prerequisites, no entry requirements. College courses paid for, CNA courses paid for, at no cost to families. We provide a rigorous New York State Regents Prep uh, program, college and career readiness courses, hands-on experiential, laboratory classes while in the school building and outside clinical experience in local health care facilities. Students will graduate with CNA licensure, CPR certification, college credits transferable to local nursing programs who are partnering with us to ensure transferable credits to the professional nursing programs. 50, 50 Beaver Street meets our criteria as an optimal, optimal location, as Dan mentioned, um, central to bus lines in the city of Albany. The entire building, as you're aware, will eventually be dedicated uh, to the, the school, provides a unique setting, a collegial setting for students. Uh, there will be a professional educational so workforce. Your time. My time? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Dr. Brenda Robinson. Dr. Robinson, we have three minutes. Hello all, thank you for the opportunity to speak. My name is Dr. Brenda Robinson. I live at 266 
Livingston Avenue here in Albany. I'm a lifelong resident of the great streets of Arbor Hill. I am the primary applicant for this wonderful school. I'm CEO and founder of the Black Nurses Coalition, which is also um, on the application of this awesome opportunity. I want to thank Jan for hitting some of the highlights of this um, wonderful opportunity. Um, those who know me know that I'm a strong advocate to eliminate healthcare disparities and to promote health equity. Um, increasing diversity in healthcare is so important, and I believe this is a great way to um, engage minorities and um, underserved children into um, healthcare. Give them a wonderful opportunity to um, be supported and promoted even through college. And I do hope that you all see the importance of this endeavor. It's awesome. And um, I look forward to uh, your approval. Thank you. Thank you. We have Melanie Melendez. Ms. Melendez, three minutes. Hello, my name is Melanie Melendez. Um, I reside at 525 Clinton Avenue. Um, I am the parent of an enrolled student to the school. Um, this is an amazing opportunity for our children, especially the children who want to go into these fields. Like my daughter took the initiative and found herself help. My daughter took the initiative to research and write down four pages of information because this is something that she wants to do. And the fact that there's an opportunity, I think is really amazing. They don't really have too many options in Albany for high schools, you know? And the fact that it'll, it'll give Albany High a little bit of space for the nurses, you know? Um, that this is a career where you have people who have empathy, who, you know, these, these are real caring people. You don't just go into nursing without having real feelings for having to do that type of work. Um, I know because I've been a CNA. I was a CNA for five years. If I would have been granted that opportunity in high school, I probably would have been more interested to go further in in college, you know, I ended up having my daughter at the young age. But the fact that God giving them that opportunity, I, I think that this is awesome. It's in a spectacular area. Like you take one bus, you can get here from anywhere in all <laughs> really. Um, all the buses reach downtown. So it's a great area. Um, and adding to downtown with the school, I think that's it'll bring some life down there. There's everything's dead down there now. So I mean I think y'all should open this for sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any additional? No. Yeah, seeing none. Um, our actions uh, our main action today is to approved conditional use permit under section 75-5056 with conditions prior to the issuance of the certificate of occupancy the proposed transportation plan will be reviewed and endorsed by APD traffic engineering unit it's condition one Condition two, prior to the issuance of the certificate of occupancy, the applicant shall enter into the stated universal access agreement with the Capital District Transportation Authority. And our third condition being uh, prior to the issuance of the building permit, the sanitary sewer engineering report and the water engineering report shall be approved by the Department of Water and Water Supply. Given that, is there a motion to approve with the conditions? So moved. Second. It has been moved by Vanessa Gellyard and Mark seconded by Martin Hall to approve 
the conditional use permit with the conditions I just read. Are there any questions on the motion? Yes, one just one question. Um, I, I I would be I would be in favor. I just want to make sure that uh, we're on the right page as far as item number three under the review standards, not cause of fiscal or environmental impact on adjacent properties, and also with the legal implication uh, on the uh, um, go back to what I stated earlier, uh, the New York State Alcohol Beverage Control Law. Um, as long as there are council uh, would opine that there is um, not an issue as was indicated in the letter from the uh, council for the applicant. Um, I'm okay with that, but I would like to get council's opinion. Asking to defer the vote. Um, at this moment. Yeah. Your, your request is not aligned with where we are in the process right now. The, the question is, is before the body. Are you making a motion to defer the vote or? Um, I guess I want to hear, hear uh, just additional discussion about item three with the review standards and um, if there's any concerns or are we okay with um, that it does meet condition number three? Just, just from staff speaking, we didn't have any concerns regarding that. Um, you know, from the information that's provided, it seems to be a reason uh, that we should not um, move ahead and approve the conditional use permit here. Okay. All right. I can work with that. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those that oppose, say no. Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you all. All right. Staff, do we have any other business before us? Please not. Hearing none, seeing none. <laughs> all in favor, turn and say aye. 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 742. Thank you. Talk to you soon, Roman. Yep. Uh, Bye.